Now our next point of discussion is to finally look at the first single-celled organisms of Earth, the first points of life on Earth. And this journey of uh, the life's origin begins with the prokaryotes. And we'll write that down, prokaryotes. Pro means first or early. And these were, in all ways, shapes, and forms, our first cells. Our first true cells that we have hard evidence that proves this is the origin of life. So what was the first of the first, let's say? The first of the first were actually known as, they were a prokaryote, of course, but they were also known as heterotrophs heterotrophs. These were absolutely the first of the first. A heterotroph is defined as something that obtains um, its energy from an organic molecule. So obtains organic molecules from its environment. Why does it do that? It does it for energy because life needs energy. So anything that's living needs energy. Heterotrophs have to physically go out and obtain organic molecules from its environment so that it has energy to live. One of the ways that it does this is through a process known as fermentation. Fermentation is an early, very, very rudimentary way of getting energy. Fermentation is defined as an anaerobic breakdown, and I'll explain that word in just a second. Anaerobic breakdown because once again getting energy is all about breaking down something it's an anaerobic breakdown of guess what it's eating what did it take from the environment organic molecules so that's what it is anaerobic breakdown of organic compounds let's say anaerobic if you think of aerobic exercise you think of tons of oxygen you're breathing in tons of oxygen anaerobic means without oxygen so fermentation is a process that does not involve oxygen. And so we can quickly talk about the idea of anaerobic versus aerobic and sort of what is what in terms of this environment. Anaerobic actually involves less overall energy from the organism, whereas aerobic breakdown involves more energy. So early on, it makes sense that whatever involved less energy was the best way for, um, let's say, the obtainment of food. But because it involves less energy, it gives you less energy. And aerobic, because it involves more energy, it's going to give you more energy. So just associate anaerobic with less energy and aerobic with more energy. And just know that there's no O2 involved here. So I'm going to write that down, no oxygen. And over here, there is oxygen, O2. You need oxygen for aerobic um, breakdown. The next thing we want to talk about are the second guys. Who was second next to the heterotrophs? After the heterotrophs, we had number two, which was our photosynthetic. I actually want to draw this a little bit higher. Our second guys were the photosynthetic autotrophs. So let's write this down. Photosynthetic autotrophs. You've probably heard of this term before, photosynthesis. It just involves using the light to synthesize something, but also this time we're going to be making sure that we understand the difference between autotroph and heterotroph. These guys, just want to write this down, were second in line. They were the second prokaryotes to form. What these guys do is that they use sunlight's energy. Why do they use sunlight energy? Because this allows it to actually produce its own food. Produce its own food. We all know that plants make their own food by utilizing the sun's energy and the same concept goes for these photosynthetic autotrophs that first developed. These are not plants per se. These are prokaryotes that developed. These are usually going to be single cell. that developed very early on and used sunlight to make its own food. What did the heterotrophs do? They actually obtained organic molecules from their environment. They had to go out and physically get energy from organic molecules. These guys will make their own food and use the sunlight as energy in that process. 
So what does this mean? These autotrophs, they were obviously the first autotrophs on Earth. But more specifically, these were autotrophs that use um, sunlight energy. I kind of went over this. Sunlight energy to break down, and you would think water, but in this situation, they actually broke down dihydrogen sulfide. Why did they do this? Because dihydrogen sulfide, H2S, was actually um, easier to break down than H2O. We understand that water is the basis of life, but originally it was not because it was all about figuring out what was easiest, what was the most efficient route to success. It wasn't really a question that these autotrophs asked. They really figured out what is the most abundant thing possible and what can I quickly take and turn into energy. Um, so this process actually is going to release sulfur. Releases sulfur as opposed to what? Imagine if you're breaking down H2O. What are you releasing? You're releasing oxygen. So because they're not breaking down H2O, they're breaking down H2S, they're going to be releasing sulfur into the environment. And that creates a very hostile environment. Later on, we start to see what are known as cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are the next stepwise process in this. What they do is they actually take sunlight, and what do you think they're going to break down? Sunlight to split, not H2S, but finally H2O. And this is going to now drastically release oxygen into our environment. What we know is that H2O, in terms of its ability to provide energy is greater than H2S. So this is a big time advantage, ADV, for the cyanobacteria. So the cyanobacteria start to increase in number because they are able to do this and they are able to perform the, uh, let's say, photosynthetic splitting of H2O at a much better rate than anybody else. And so they become the winners. And because they become the winners, whatever they release, goes and that release of O2 actually overall increased O2 in the atmosphere a great great amount. We have to thank the early cyanobacteria for their ability to break H2O because they're the reason we have oxygen. They're the reason that what is known as the oxygen revolution happened. Oxygen revolution. This means that this was the turning point and this was how about I think 20 2.4 or 20, uh, let's not worry about the time. This oxygen revolution is what caused everything to start using oxygen. Specifically, what we can write down is that finally, third in line were the aerobes. What do you think the aerobes are going to do since they're third? Their name implies that because of this increase in oxygen, remember this is, this is literally going in time, stepwise. We're going from oldest to newest. The aerobes, which are third, used aerobic respiration, of course aerobic respiration, R-E-S-P, and they, that means that they use O2 because the O2 became more abundant. Why did it become more abundant? Because cyanobacteria were able to split H2O. They would take water and release oxygen. Because they were able to use O2, what happened was O2 oxygen is an absolutely great way to obtain energy. So what happened was these aerobes had more energy that could be, they were able to extract more energy from their food. So more energy was extracted from food. They became more and more efficient. As time goes on, the heterotrophs, they were just there to take anything that they saw and ferment it. And that's not really that efficient. They did anaerobically. This is a very tough process that they went through. They then gave the ability or then sort of evolved into photosynthetic autotrophs. These guys said, you know what, let's use the sunlight and tell the sunlight to do our work. But the only problem was the first autotrophs, they were only able to break down H2S, which is easier than H2O, but definitely not as energy efficient or energy rich. Cyanobacteria come in, they say, you know what, I can break down H2O. And if I can break down H2O, I'm going to be at an advantage. I'm going to release O2. This is going to cause an oxygen revolution. This oxygen revolution eventually leads to the formation of aerobes. Aerobes were third in line, but because they were third in line, they were the most evolved of the prokaryotes. They had aerobic respiration. They used O2 to create more energy from their food.